This film is concerned with the manner in which the upper extremity amputee activates and controls his prosthesis. Since the artificial limbs used for amputations below the elbow differ from those used for amputations above the elbow, the two types of prostheses will be discussed separately. We will begin with a discussion of the below elbow prosthesis, focusing our attention on these four areas. Control system, the below elbow harness, body control motions, and the operating sequence. Let's first examine the mechanics of the single control system. This below elbow amputee with his prosthesis demonstrates the simplest type of prosthetic control system, the single control system. By definition, single control means there is but one cable in the system. The grasping mechanism, or as it is more frequently called, the terminal device, may be either a with this type of terminal device, the fingers are opened by the force exerted by the amputee and closed by the rubber band seen in the illustration. The force of prehension or grasp is determined by the number of rubber bands, each rubber band providing approximately one pound of prehension or pinch. With this model, we see that arm motion is used by the amputee to open the fingers of the terminal device. Since the below elbow amputee generally retains normal elbow joint function and can thereby voluntarily place the forearm in any position of function, the sole purpose of the single control system is to operate the terminal device. The force for prehension is generated by shoulder motion and is transmitted to the terminal device by a steel control cable. For most of its length, the control cable passes through a continuous stainless steel tunnel or housing. The control cable housing is fastened to the prosthesis at its upper end by a component called a crossbar assembly. The housing passes near the elbow joint and is attached to the forearm by the forearm retainer. The housing terminates distal to the forearm retainer. The control cable originates at a metal hanger which is attached to the harness. The cable enters the proximal part of the housing above the crossbar assembly, passes near the elbow joint, leaves the housing distal to the forearm retainer, and terminates at the operating lever or thumb of the terminal device. The function of the housing is to prevent the control cable from bridging between the crossbar assembly and the forearm retainer when force is applied to open the terminal device. Without the housing, tension on the cable would tend to cause the elbow to flex. This illustration demonstrates the path along which the control cable would pass in the absence of the housing. The housing, then, serves to maintain a fixed length between the two ends of the control cable, regardless of whether or not the elbow is flexed. Notice that because of the housing, the amputee can maintain the terminal device in the open position throughout the range of elbow flexion. The fingers of the terminal device can be opened and closed with the elbow fully flexed or with the elbow completely extended. Next, let's examine the below elbow harness. The below elbow harness serves two major functions. First, to provide for operation of the terminal device. And second, to retain the prosthesis securely on the stump. The harness is laid up in a figure of eight pattern. The crossing point of the figure of eight may be either sewn together or, as seen here, joined by a stainless steel ring.
first component of the harness consists of a Dacron loop which passes under the axilla on the sound side and provides a secure anchor for the entire harness system. The second element of the harness is referred to as the anterior support strap. The anterior support strap originates at the ring, passes over the shoulder on the amputated side, and is fastened to the prosthesis by two straps at the anterior proximal margins of the triceps pad in the form of an inverted Y. The anterior support strap should pass through the deltopectoral groove the inverted Y should be provided with buckles for adjustability. The primary function of the anterior support strap is to provide stability against a downward pull. After the axilla loop and the anterior support strap, the third major component of the below elbow harness is the control attachment strap. Originating at the ring, the control attachment strap passes below mid-scapular level, is attached to the control cable, and looped back through a buckle for adjustability. In effect, the control attachment strap is continuous with and an integral part of the control cable system of the below elbow prosthesis. Next, Let's examine the body control motions which the below elbow amputee uses to operate his prosthesis. The basic body control motion for opening the fingers of the terminal device of a below elbow prosthesis is flexion of the shoulder joint. Shoulder flexion provides an excellent source of both force and excursion for operating the below elbow prosthesis. It has been estimated that adult male amputees can generate between 40 and 60 pounds of force through an excursion of four to six inches. These values far exceed the force and excursion needed to operate the terminal device. Shoulder flexion increases the distance between the ring and the crossbar assembly.